Hello world, I'm LeCarp, welcome to Griftlands, which is a new deck building game made by Clay, who I know best for making oxygen not included, and uh, this game is still in alpha, as it says their alpha build in development, and as games usually are, it's best to explain while we go on. So first of all, we can choose a character here, we can play with Sal, we can play with Rook, or we can play with a third character who still hasn't been made, because you know, the game is still in, in alpha, but yeah, let's start with Sal. And we got two decks in this game. We got a negotiation deck and a battle deck, and that's what we start. Uh, I played this game a lot, pretty much quite a lot already. So I have unlocked all the card sets. I have unlocked some prestige. This is basically difficulty levels. But just to show you how this game is at its like core, I have disabled all the extra card sets, and we are playing at uh, level zero prestige here. Mutators are things that we would could add here to change the experience. Like modifiers to how things work like uh well there's the one that i use most is uh veteran here draft the starting battle deck of 10 cards and there's another thing it's called charisma i think yeah draft the starting negotiation deck of 10 cards of course you know if you don't know what the cards are it's better just not any use any of those um, but those are the ones i use most and then uh if we have unlocked some outfits we'll, we'll just use the basic outfit here okay so uh let's uh, start you've pictured your revenge so many times but what if she gets you first what if someone else does? You scratch those thoughts out like lines on the paper. You're here for Cassio. That's the only way this story ends. Yeah, so this is very much a story-based game in addition to being a deck-building card game. So we got a story going on here in the background all the time. Fish! This person here. Uh, and this, this one thing I like here is sometimes we have these words that are highlighted here and if we uh, hover over them we see what it means so fish Jake's pardon her. so fish has a drink waiting for you even though it's been years she remembered your favorites you're not the only one who wants cashy out of the picture play your cards right and the revenge you want so bad I'll deliver it myself oh it'll deliver itself so we get to pick a starting bonus here we can upgrade a negotiating card we can draft two negotiating cards or we can add a negotiation graph slot Hmm. You know, let's upgrade a negotiation card. Okay, these are all things that I need to explain a bit more. Once it comes a bit more uh, important, so swing people to your side and just might have a chance. So these are our negotiation cards, and now we can update one of them. As you can see, all of these have like little pips here. Uh, every time we play a card, it gets one experience. This is the experience uh, or upgrade progress. It says there in this window here that I can't, I can't hover over because I'm hovering over this to show the window. But anyways, uh, once it gets to the full, we can then upgrade it and these are all the like, we can right click on it to see all the upgrade uh, possibilities. We can choose from two possibilities. For these basic cards they have apparently five options, but uh, most cards only have two options for upgrade. So what we want to upgrade kind of depends on what other cards we'd have. But since we don't really know yet, what we're gonna upgrade is quick thinking here, which says improvise a card from a pool of special cards. Improvise means choose one of three cards from a random pool to put into your hand. So we're gonna upgrade uh, this one, and then we can do, turn it into improvise plus, which means we can choose from five cards, or we can choose from a pool of upgraded special cards. I think we're just gonna take promoted thinking. It's it's just a gate. It helps us basically. This in put us in any kind of direction, it helps us. So then we can talk to fish about things. We can ask about Haveria. Haveria is a largely unsolved continent on the western side of the Hessian Sea. We can ask about fish Mene Wene, okay, about her, or we can ask about Cassio, uh, Cassio Jirak, a powerful crime lord who earns her fortune in legal debt progress. Uh, she's the one we're trying to kill because that's what we're trying to do. So all of this stuff, this is just this is fluff. We can ask people about stuff. Help me get my bearings. It's been a long time since I was last in Haveria. It's dirty and broken, like always. Debt broken was bad when you were a kid. It's worse now. Half the population is indentured, and them that hold contracts sell them to pay off their own. No wonder customers are so upside on my way back in. Must be a lot of fraud. That ain't the half of it. The Admiral is pushing for an official annex. They want to make everyone real Deltrian citizens, with papers and everything. In Haveria? You're joking. They say it'll stop illegal debt brokering. Now anyone with a hand in labor contracts is real ordinary, from the poor to the powerful. You can imagine the reaction. I can. So, 
yeah, this is all fluff, and I don't, it's not important, we don't get anything from it, so I don't think I'm gonna be reading all of this stuff. We're actually just gonna focus on the actual gameplay here uh, on uh, this particular run, so we're gonna get work from Fish. I got people in my pocket who owe me a favor. Freck, Brash, and Edith. They're easy people to find. Tell them I sent you, and they can sell their taps by giving you work. Get that done, and I'll get you a plate that popped Ashnu eyes on the house. Once again, we can check. What is what's an Ashnu? Ashnu is a domesticated giant snail used for food, transport, and entertainment. Bless your worry, hide fish. I'll hold you to that. So leave. And then we can choose one of three jobs. And as far as I understand, it's not always the same job that are offered. So there's a little bit of a roguelike element here that it's randomized. It's sometimes randomized this a bit. So. We can do this question, uh, repo person, we can do this question, early retirement, or we can do this question, secret shopper. And they all have, well, some sort of rewards. We look at uh, down here, the rewards are starting pick. Pick a card to help you on the quest, stick to shields, shields is money over here. And remove a card, okay, remove a card is always pretty powerful. Uh, here, starting bonus is to pick your card, we got 70 shields, and we can upgrade a card, that's also pretty good. And here... Well, we can also pick another card, we got 65 shields, and we get this card that is shown here in the middle of the screen, the Healing Vapors. Uh, I honestly feel like removing a card is probably the best bet for here, and uh, as you can see, these are all quests that are focused on negotiation. Look, yeah, well, that's what we're talking about, let's look at, so we have, over here, we can view our negotiating deck. We already saw this, but we also have a battle deck, which we have, you know, defensive cards, attack cards, basic stuff here. And also up here we have grafts, so these are things that we can, that will give us some sort of effects. It's probably better to talk about them once we actually get some of them. And uh, yeah, I feel like removing a card is gonna be good. I always like removing cards, just having a tight deck is just good. Oh, and now we get a random encounter. You happen upon a luminary standing off the side of the road, deep in thought. Tiamati. Greetings, Scripter. I need your help, and I'm at your mercy unless you give it. Murkot motions towards a pile of dirty canisters, one of them leaking a noxious orange fluid. I require assistance carrying this. Spark. Surely you have time to assist the will of Hesh. Hesh is... Hesh of the Dark, the cult's god of the abyss that believed to live deep under the ocean. Or don't you walk in the shallows? I kinda like the fact, I really like the fact actually that the, these guys like, when they talk they just say some sort of nonsense, but at least we get a, a, like an idea of what their voice sounds like. So, uh, you know what, let's just agree to carry the Spark. Uh, Spark is a recently discovered fuel source harvested from underground and pioneered by the technocratic Spark barons. Sell me up and call me a pack mule. Wouldn't be the first time. Thank you. Although you may be a heathen, your actions will ripple through the tides. Come with me. The luminary heads for the road, leaving you to follow with the sparking toad. Okay. He wants us to go here, so let's uh, go here. And now, he's joined our party, so he's gonna help. If we get combat or negotiation happen, he's gonna help us with that. You don't make it very far down the road before you're confronted by Spark Baron, her face pallid from excursion. Spark Barons are a technocratic faction who retrofit new technology for an from ancient ruins, much to the cult's displeasure. S Stop right there! Where do you find that spark, Grifter? And we are a Grifter. A Grifter is a name for any faction as a settler, explorer, or opportunist who hails from the Haverian Riftlands. I'm uh, just holding for a friend. Huh? That luminary there? Not likely. That spark is stolen. I was transporting it to a supply station. So how did it end up with my luminary friend here? Ask your slippery pal! I just got up to take a leak. Now, the luminary might want to remember we got a truce in play. The Hessians don't touch spark, and we don't touch lumen. Lumen is a biofuel harvested from the ocean floor, monopolized by the cult of Hesh, and harvested by indentured labor. We both play by the rules, and we keep Haveria from all-out war, don't we? So, let's uh, let's uh, do an actual negotiation here, and convince attack to back off. So, because we got that guy in our team at this moment, we get this extra thing here. So, okay. Let's talk about basics. Basic things here. We have life here, or resolve as it's called in this battle. We get 30 of it, and that plus one means we get one defense here. Uh, she's got 20 life here. This is our main argument. This is what we want to destroy to win this 
negotiation. This is called an argument. This is called an argument. I think this is called an argument as well. No, this is called the core argument here, and this is called an argument. So, uh, over here we can see what she is going to do next turn. So, she is going to do four damage. That four damage is going to go to our core argument over here. She's also going to deploy an argument against us. Uh, I think this says. Yeah, if we look at the core argument here, it says at the start of tax turn, steal a card from Sal and hold it hostage. Okay, so she's gonna do that. Uh, we have, well, we gain compo one composure. Composure is uh, the defense here. We gain one composure at the start of our turn. And uh, this thing here adds two resolve and two composure to a friendly argument at the start of Sal's turn. So this adds two composure and two re uh, resolve. Resolve is the health. So all these arguments here, they have their own health. So what we're gonna do here, well, we got cards here, we got attacks, we got a little bit of defense. Let's start with defense. So now we're not taking any damage because we have four composure against the four damage that we're taking. And then we can use this to insert something in our hand or, or to create an argument. So, or Okay, let's, let's show this. So I play this, it lets me choose from two cards. I can gain influence or I can gain dominance. Uh, we're gonna gain influence because if we look at here, it says all diplomacy cards deal maximum damage. We have two diplomacy cards here. The green cards are diplomacy cards. And if we take dominance, dominance says hostility cards deal an additional plus one damage. But also, it also says reduced by one at the start of your turn. So if we use this, we get pretty much no benefit from it. And then it's gonna go away. Influence, on the other hand, is an argument with two resolve. Uh, as its dominance, but it does not have the thing that says that it will go away at the beginning of our turn. So we're gonna take some influence here, and it's also a two power attack. The power of the attack is right here, the strength. So we use this, attack her for two, and now our fast talks do three to three damage instead of the one to three damage, because now we have some influence here. So let's just fast talk. And that's it for our turn, so end turn and go to next turn. Okay, so she stole our deflection, which is kind of unfortunate because that was the one that actually had, uh, yeah, we're, which the one that we had some experience on. Okay, so she's got an argument here, which is called All Business. Tank gains one composure for each hostility card you draw. So we drew two hostility cards, she got two composure. Uh, she's attacking us for five and doing another argument. So we can target her core argument or we can target these arguments here. So let's get rid of All Business here, first of all. And the extra damage goes back to the core argument which is of course good. We're gonna apply to Composure to here so that we're not taking any damage. And we probably want that Composure. Oh man, oh, that was a bad play for my part. What I really should have done is I should have threatened here first to get this Composure that already has some experience on it. And we should have used that to gain more experience on that. So as soon as we get it to full experience, we can upgrade it. So, uh, okay, that's it for this turn. So end turn which uh, we can just use E as the hotkey here, so let's uh, do that. Okay, she gave us... Okay, she... <laughs> Once again, she stole one that has... Ooh, okay. So we're getting a lot of attacks coming in this turn. Two, two, and three. So that's a total of seven. But uh, this Prayer of Hesh is giving us extra resolve. Our actual resolve maximum, I think, is 30. So, but we still, we're at 34. So basically we can take four damage without any issues. Uh, and this here is a strawman argument. And when this argument is destroyed, we gain three vulnerability. And vulnerability means that all loss of, all resolve loss is increased by one. Reduced by one at the start of your turn. I don't think that's actually true. I think it actually increases damage by one. Because resolve loss and damage, I mean, I wouldn't count them as the same thing. Maybe the game considers them the same thing. I wouldn't consider them the same thing. Okay, uh, let's uh, use some deflection here. I mean, I don't want to take damage if I can avoid it. Uh, let's do the fast talk over here. Get two damage over there. And then we will threaten some more. Wait, why is it doing less damage? Oh, did the argument... In did the argument increase damage as well? I don't. I, okay, maybe it did. Maybe I didn't read properly. Okay, you're still in error. That. Oh, oh! All attacks deal one more damage when this argument is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had not noticed that fact there. 
before. Okay, sure. She's gonna try to destroy our influence here. If she destroys our influence, it takes two damage because it has to result, and the three damage will be applied to our core argument. But we have three composure. So basically, if we want to, you know what? We can't. We even cannot save this influence because we only have three composure here. If we put it here, uh, we will be at two composure, and it's saying he's doing five damage. Actually. If we fast talk this out of here first, and then we use the composure, we're only taking one damage here, so this is still going to survive. So mm, let's, uh, because the threaten has more experience, let's just use that. Even though it, yeah, just did one damage. It could have done four, but it just did one, so we were just unlucky there. Okay. Stole our improvise. I think we're probably gonna end this uh, this turn. Yeah, with two fast talks we can end this. But here's the thing: Do you want to end this combat or not? Because if we keep on fighting, we can get more experience for our cards. At some point we're gonna get an effect that says we're not gonna gain any more experience. But since that's not in play just yet, let's just keep getting more experience. Uh. That thing won't be destroyed by 2 damage, so we'll use Composure on our main argument. And we'll fast talk some more over here. And then in turn, and... Uh, yeah, we get damage in. Okay, so she's getting impatient now. This is a thing that happens in every negotiation at some point. So they get impatient, and this means that their intents and arguments are deployed with plus 2 damage. And their arguments deploy with plus 2 resolve. Strangely, this one didn't. And we also got fatigued here, and this means we are no longer gain XP for this negotiation. So it doesn't matter if we play this card here, for instance. Uh, we don't get the XP tick on that anymore. So we'll just finish this argument over here. And now we can... It's, since it was a negotiation that we just finished, we can pick another card. So what do we have here? We have Build Report. Gain 2 Influence and Apply 2 Composure to it. Keep cool, double composure or, or arguments, a backpedal, expend one chosen card in your hand, apply five composure. Hmm, so all of this basically gives us composure. Like, this gives us influence, and influence is pretty good. This would double composure or arguments, and uh, we can uh, right click them to see what are the upgrade possibilities for this, and we can always can choose from two. So sticky here means that this will stay in our hand once we draw it in our hand, it will stay in our hand until we play. Uh, that's actually pretty good because this is basically th six composure once it's upgraded, but it's not that good before it's upgraded. And backpedal, yeah, we can expend cards. And expending cards is it's kind of a two-edged sword because you can't if we expend a card, you can't use that in that battle anymore. But if it's not a good card and you just don't want it to stop, you know, stuffing your deck, then it's a good thing. So let's take backpedal here. You want to take even alone, Luminari Baron? We're alone out here. We make the rules. And right now, I don't see much of a reason to keep you alive. But fine. Keep the spark. There's more where that came from, Luminari. A lot more. How's the Luminaris faring, huh? The Baron leaves and Morkot exhales. You're being licked by Hesh's blessed tongue, Richter. This is why I hate the Hessian blessings. Let's continue. Get back to here. You arrived at a small outpost constructed around a strange relic. That's it, Hunter. Thank you for your assistance. Just place a spark under that top, if you don't mind. You drop the spark and carry it with the top. Morkot is visibly relieved once it's out of sight. What's that look for? Is there something on my face? Hesh's work often requires discretion. It occurs to me I have no way to assure yours. Not true. That's what you paid for, after all. So we can leave. So with our business concluded, I'll be going now. Just as you're about to leave, a priest emerges from the outpost with a bark of dismay. Trespasser, what do you think you're doing in this holy space? Priest, this is a hunter I hired to carry the spark. You hired a common grifter? I can't carry the cursed fuel. You can, Luminari, and you should have. That's why you exist, to prostrate yourself before the abyss. You are no priest, you are a holy thug, it's the least of Hesh's reach. Did anyone else see you? There were some barons, but... Barons? How have you failed so completely? Try to back away slowly. You decide to leave before blades come out. You take two steps back, but the priest's attention snaps to you. 
I'll just, uh... You'll stop right there. Each breath you take threatens to release the secrets of our outpost. Clearly, it's Hesh's will that you should die here rather than betray us. So we could, uh, do another negotiation or we could do some battle. Well, as you can see, there will be two people against us in this battle, so I'm thinking that negotiation is better because Murkov will help us in this negotiation. So let's negotiate here. Who brought me to you, huh? If not Hesh itself. Okay, so. And as she is a different kind of enemy than the one we previously fought, she has a different kind of core argument. Her core argument here says that when an argument of Prynas is removed or destroyed, she is Prina, all other arguments gain one result. And she's gonna put two arguments up, which is uh, pretty fun, I think. Okay, let's uh, start by getting this influence in play again. And do a couple fast talks here. And her turn. Show. She puts out a prayer of Hesh, just like we have here, and she puts out a wrath of Hesh. Targets an opponent argument each turn for 1 to 2 damage. Targets all opponent arguments, yeah. So she's doing 1 to 2 damage to all of our things here. So we want to get rid of that first of all. So let's use some fast talk here. And that was her only attack, so we don't need to use any composure to defend any of our things. So let's uh let's just use the promoter thinking here right now. So what we can get is, ooh, let's take the Toll Observation, because it does cost zero, it does zero to six damage. But, because we have Influence here, and it's a Diplomacy card, it's gonna do all of that six damage. So we'll get rid of our, that thing, and do the extra damage over there, and uh, then we'll just threaten her as well. And the weird part about this is, <laughs> because sometimes... Sometimes you build a deck that's all about like aggression or sometimes you build a deck that's all about diplomacy and then Like the situations where you use them just like Feel like okay. How, how did we threaten ourselves into a better situation in that situation like sometimes I can negotiate for more money for quests and Like I can understand like being diplomatic in that kind of situation, but then when you're being all aggressive about hey, I, I need to get more money. Why are they giving us more money? Don't really get it. Okay now we don't none of these really help us But if we play a card here we get the exp The XP pip on that card. So it's always good to play your all of your cards Choose all of your actions so that you can get more experience on your cards Okay, let's see here when destroyed result to resolve for every enemy argument. Okay, that doesn't really do anything for us uh, but, 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 let's look at things here. So, we want to get experience for this fast talk for sure. Okay, there's two damage there. So, if we use any of our damage things on her argument, we are going to win this battle, but we're also, that's also going to be the end of the battle. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to use Sal's instincts here. Uh, we're going to take, it doesn't really matter which one we take, because we're not going to play that. And then we're going to play this deflection over here. Oh, she's actually doing some damage to us. I didn't even realize it there. But anyways, we're not taking any damage now. And then we got one more turn to gain experience for our cards. And... Oh, she's not doing any damage. And we're still not tired. So let's just gain some more... XP for our composure cards. Let's improvise. Okay, let's uh, improvise the boosted gossip. Which deploys a two bait. Bait must be targeted before anything else. Gain two resolve for each count. Bait is an argument with two resolve. And expand means it's just not gonna be in our hand anymore. So if we play this, it's gonna create us an argument. And next turn, if she's got hostile intents, they will target our, our this argument here. And this will also just target that argument. And okay, now we're tired, so let's just finish this battle. Or negotiation, it's not a battle. Okay, let's see, what do we get? We get plead, lose one influence. Now, this doesn't this doesn't mean that we have to have influence to use this card. It just says that if we have influence and we use this, we're gonna lose one. So, kinda looks like we are going for a little bit more of a yeah, diplomatic direction since our fast talks are getting more experience, yeah? So maybe we'll just take build rapport. There are other cards that use influence as well, so maybe just having extra influence will be good. Now this would say, draw one card, return the next card you play to your draw pile. Which is also pretty cute, it means we can play any card we really want. Well, if we have this in our card, it means that we can play any card we want on the, the, like, the next turn. 
Hmm. Or we can play any card we have in our hand once on this turn and next time on the next turn if we want to. Uh, but it still costs one. Yeah, I don't really see much value in this right now. So let's just take build rapport. I got the job done. Seems to me Hesh meant for me to be there. So trust in Hesh that will keep the secret, yeah? It's true that Tide of the Abyss can't be seen from the surface. Why well, Hesh would send you. Keep your mouth shut and I'll allow to use this place for rest. At worst, you'll find the fate. At best, you'll be where I can keep an eye on you. Okay, so. Can we talk to you? You got anything? Mm, we can get a blessing from you. Or we could spar with you. This will gain up to 5 random battle card XP. Lose 5 HP. You know, this sounds pretty useful. So let's do this. 5 HP isn't that much. Hey, you must be getting antsy out here all alone in the woods with only stick in the mud for company. Wanna spar? I must be vigilant, for I never know where Hesh will see fit to deliver me. Huh? That's a yes, of course. You and Mirko spar across a patch of dry dirt. It's hard work, but you both learn something before it's through. Lost 5 HP. Total 5 XP gained 2 for Fane, Fight Dirty gained 2, and Elbow Strike gained 1. When it's over, you each take a moment to collect yourselves. Next time, you might just best me. I look forward to it. Until then, Sal. And I know you hate hearing this. Here it comes. But may you walk in the shallows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's go for an actual mission. And none of these had... Uh, yeah, none of these had combat. I'd really like to show some combat here, but... Uh, let's go for... This one was... Uh, yeah, remove a card from one of your decks. Yeah, let's go here. And... When you move here, if you press the right mouse button... You can move faster. Okay, here's a person who wants to do something. Despite her name, Bradash is actually pretty level-headed. Another day in the feud, huh? So, opportunity repo person. I'm offering my arms for pay. It slices, it dices, you won't find a better offer, I tell ya. Maybe just a firm handshake will do the trick. I got a client who uh, hired my business partner to acquire some goods legally. I'm detecting a lot of euphemisms. Well, my business partner took off with the funds. I hope he just went to get the goods like he was supposed to. But I haven't seen him in days, and the client is breathing blisters onto my neck. I need you to confront Pazlock, find out what the holdup is. Hopefully it's a quick fix. Yeah, calling it now. It's not. Just find Pazlock, get the goods, then deliver them to our client. I'll pay you extra just to make sure this all gets smooth already, okay? Yeah, sure, we'll accept this mission. Oh, we can choose a card, right. Uh, you know what, since we took the card that gave us extra influence, let's take Plead uh, now. Good luck, you'll probably need it out there. Okay, so where do we go? There. There's Pazlock. Oh, and one thing we could do here is, because there are other people around here, so we could like talk to Aware here. Folks often look to Aware as a natural leader, even if the hierarchy doesn't necessarily agree. Day to you. So we could pay her to help us. You know? So we could pay her 45 shields, so she'd help us in a negotiation, or we could pay her 6 to 7 shields, so she'd help us in a negotiation or fight. And we could do that with all of these characters here. We could pay her. Yeah. We could pay him. We could, oh, we pay him to look the other way. So he, because these guys, you see, they're dressed in a similar way. It means that they're in the same faction. So if I start fighting with Pazlock here, this guy would come and help Pazlock. But if I pay him to look the other way, he won't come into the fight, and we can pay him to help us in the negotiation. We can't pay him to help us in the fight, because he's just not going to fight against the guy who's of the same faction as he is. So, let's talk to Pazlock here. Some folks look like they can handle the rough life more than others. Pazlock? Yeah, he'll do. Don't think my day would involve a grifter dealing. Ask Pazlock about the money. The Pazlock? Brash sent me. Wants to know where her money got to. It's come to that, has it? I got the goods just like Brass asked me to, but I got mugged. Now the bandits are sitting pretty on our stock. So, let's offer to help retrieve the goods. Like, we could fight him, as you can see now, if you look over here, uh, that Yibit would be helping Pazlock in this fight, so we don't want to do that. Let's offer to help retrieve the goods. That's where I come in. Know where to find these bandits? I do! And with the mug's funny looking as yours, we might just be able to get the stuff back. Uh, maybe let me do the talking, though. Okay, now Pazlock is in our party. 
And here is where the package is. Finding the bandits is the easy part. Getting the goods back will likely be harder. Hey, to interrupt you in your place of business, but it seems you stole something from a friend of mine. Could be. I have a habit collecting other people's stuff. What you supposed to do about it, Grifter? So, just... I, I would normally maybe just do negotiation, because... I'm, I'm, I'm a pacifist kind of guy. I like to... If I can do things without violence, I like to do them without violence, but... Uh, let's uh, do a battle here. Now, the negative thing about doing battle is Goni will dislike us. And, uh, well, we might get into relationships a bit more after it comes uh, something that affects us. But let's just let's just fight him to see what the battle is like. Fine! There are other ways to settle this. Okay, so this is combat. It's, you know, it's a... Still, it's still a card game. Uh... We see here, so we're getting damage from Thug Goni here. Goni here's got 36 health, he's got 27 panic meter. So panic means that once we get over that, they're gonna panic and we can then choose to just uh, accept their surrender or we can kill them, whichever we want to. He's got last stand, gains 3 power when below 22 health, power increases attack damage. And he's got Shroke's, Shroke, yeah, Shroke skin. The first time Goni takes damage each turn, they gain 2 defense. This is a species boon. So we'll be taking 6 damage here it looks like, so let's just uh, do a couple of feints to not take any damage and then we can attack with a stab or an elbow strike. The elbow strike's got a little bit of XP, it's got a uh, set amount of damage it does, which is 3 here, while the stab's 2 to 5, so we can do more damage with a stab or we can do less damage with a stab. Uh, let's just do the elbow strike because it has experience and I just want to get more experience. As you can see, uh, he gained 2 defense because of the Shroke skin. Uh, his health went down 3, and his panic went down 3. Okay, next turn, and Pazlock here is doing some sort of a buff. Uh, also, he's got Cradesi Regeneration. At the end of Pazlock's turn, apply 2 heal. This is a species boon. So, so this guy... Yeah, he gained some power. This guy attacked us, didn't really get anything through. No, this turn, he's getting 5 damage from Pazlock, and he is gonna do a buff of sorts to himself, so... Uh, what are we gonna do? Well, we got Fight Dirty here, so we can improvise a card. We got South Daggers here, which can give us two different cards. Okay, let's uh, take, so let's take Bleed here. If we apply two Bleed to Goni here, it's a debuff here, and at the beginning of their turn, take damage equal to count of Bleed, and then how Bleed count. Like if you play different games like this, let's say Slay the Spire. Uh, we're in Slay the Spire, they have uh, the poison effect on that one character, and it also, it always gives the amount of damage that the count is, and then it goes down by one, and then next turn it gives that amount of damage, and etc, etc, etc. This is basically like that, except that this halves the count, so it doesn't do nearly as much damage. But it might be a bit easier to actually gain that, if you have cards that actually do that. Okay, let's fight dirty. We'll improvise a card. So we can apply two wounds. Wounds make it so, actually, you are attacking him, aren't you? Yeah. Wounds would make him take more damage. Power gives us, uh, yeah, power gives us, well, more damage. So we deal more damage. If we gave him a wound, he would have taken more damage, but the wounds go away at the end of the turn, or they, the count of the wounds goes down by one. And there you can see, he took two bleeds, and he went down one. He also revved, so he's attacks apply one bleed, then reduce revved up by one. Okay, uh, and our feints here, we don't need to put them on ourselves, we can apply them to the other people in our party as well. So we can make sure that Pazlock doesn't take any damage, and uh, you know what, let's use Fight Dirty again. Okay, you're taking 7 damage. Okay, let's use the wound now just so you can see what it does. So if I put wounds here, you can see he's gonna receive 9 damage now, though. The amount of damage he's taking went up by the count of wounds here. And uh, at the beginning of their turn, the wound is reduced by one. So next turn, go for next turn. Oh, he, right, he went below his, uh, he had the thing that when he goes below a certain number, he gets three power, so that happened there. And yeah, the wound went down by one. And now you can see there is uh, this marker here, this white flag, so he'll panic this turn. And our things happen before his things. So Pathlock's gonna hit him for seven, and that's gonna make him give up. So, we know that that's gonna happen. Uh, we could also just deal enough damage on ourselves, uh, which we're probably gonna do, but... You know what? We just wanna take some... Cause, yeah, the battle's gonna end this turn, so let's just gain as much experience for our cards as we can. Let's take a couple of those feints, and let's use this elbow strike, cause it's 
pretty close to being uh, leveled. And yeah, now Pazlock is gonna hit him. And he's gonna panic, and then we could kill him. Or we can accept the surrender. I think we're gonna accept the surrender. I don't wanna kill people, because if you kill people... Okay, let's uh, just accept the surrender, and I'll talk about relationships. Because now he dislikes us. That doesn't really do anything just yet, but uh, we'll see a little bit more soon. Okay, so we can... Pick a card here. Hmm. Spare blades. Unplayable. If this card is discarded, insert a blade flash into your hand. Uh, chamber. Gain two defense. At the start of your next turn, gain two combo. Haymaker. Finisher. Deal two bonus damage per combo. Okay, clearly the game wants us to go for a combo direction here. Basically, all with Sal here, you get two, I'd say, two main options to go for in battle, and they are combos and bleed. So. Clearly, the game wants us to give combo, so let's just take the Haymaker. We don't really have any cards that give us combo just yet, but if we have a finisher, it's the combo actually have a point, because they just don't do anything on their own. You find the goods in the bandits' things. Okay, and I said, well, let's talk about relationships here first. So we have this uh, over here, we have the relationships panel, this hop key to R. People can love us, people can like us, people can dislike us, or they can hate us. Uh, Cashier here hates us, but he's, he's this is basically just a plot driven thing, it's not, it's not an actual thing that has any effects, but... So, Ghani here dislikes us, which doesn't really do anything just yet, but if we were to go to the location where he's at, let's say he's at the bar some night, and we have to do a conversation at the bar, because he dislikes us, he is going to oppose us in that uh, negotiation, in that... I'm not... I'm not sure if they come into combat when they dislike us yet, but in, in negotiation they'll be against us. And the people who like us, they will be with us in a negotiation. And if they start loving us, we're actually gonna get a buff that will help us all the time. But if they hate us, we're gonna get a debuff that affects us all the time. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, go finish this package and maybe, we, maybe this person will love us after this. Deliver the package to Gura. If the strain in his brow is anything to go by, Gura might be open to a new line of work. The Shrok looks you up and down in suspicion. Give Gura the goods. You Gura, brush them and deliver the goods, and to apologize for the delay. It won't happen again. Huh, I was about to send someone to collect, but I can see Brash hired a professional to get it done. I assume this wasn't just a hiccup, but it's all Brash won't be so charitable next time. You get paid 60 shills. Okay, Brash likes us. Okay, didn't... Uh, Love us yet. So now we can remove a card. Uh, I think we're gonna remove a battle card because our negotiation cards all have like the cards I'd want to remove are the threatens and the fast talks basically. But they all already have some experience. So if we can remove a battle card that doesn't have any experience, like we can do with all of our stabs, I feel like that's more gains for us. So we'll remove a stab. And uh, okay, now we can choose like these orange things are things that are here only for this particular screen okay if we go to anywhere else we cannot get to this so we can this is like a bonus we have to pick right now so we could either go here and get an enfeebling ray apply one cripple replenish destroy after she uses so that would be in our battle deck not that useful to be frankly honest here is the meditation spot this opportunity will disappear if you don't go straight to it there's something special about this place. You can go here to gather your thoughts and strengthen your resolve. That sounds much more better, so let's go here. Okay, so we could get... If we had lost any of our resolve, we could get our resolve back. But on, we can also meditate on the nature of meditation. And this will increase our max resolve by 5. It's gonna cost us 20 resolve, which is kinda unfortunate. But that's just what we're gonna do now. The woods fall silent. There is nobody around. You can take a moment to gather your thoughts. You empty your mind and ponder that nature of the void. You finish the session exhausted, but you learn a thing or two about your own insignificance. So we lost 20 resolve and gained max 5 resolve. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, wait, isn't that bad? Because we were so long, ro low on resolve. Well, kind of, but luckily we can actually heal our resolve. So we go to the bar here and we talk to fish here. We can buy a drink. So, it will restore 10 resolve and then give us these two cards, Slurge Speech and Tipsy, which are not very good cards, they're kind of like blockers in our decks, but doesn't really matter that much. And because Fish likes us, we get a 25% discount, so that's also, if people like us or dislike us, 
if they are shopkeepers, that has an effect on the price. So yeah, we'll buy buy a drink here. I think 20 is gonna be good enough result for us for a while at least, so let's not get any more drunk here. Okay, and then we would need to pick up a next mission. So here we can get a graft. The grafts are these things here, we don't have any of them, so that's probably the place we're gonna go for. Uh, here we could remove a card, and here we could get a hip flask. So I think we're gonna go for this challenging quest here, sing your sapa to get a graft. But I also think we're actually gonna put a cut in here. I was hoping because, uh, as you can see, there's day one, it says here. This is, uh, it's five days that this whole campaign takes. So I was, kind of, I was hoping that we could get one, one day in one episode, but it kind of looks like we're not gonna get one day per episode. So I think we're gonna put a cut in here and continue from this point in the next video. I'm a hop. Uh, this has been a Griftlands. Goodbye, world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.